Right, so thank you very much for this opportunity to come and share what we've been doing at Birmingham. So um, Ian earlier mentioned the Terminator robots, so I'm Sarah Connor. So um, that's um, nice to have a bit of flow through the day. Thank you. I get many answer messages at work, leaving me special messages. Um, anyway, so I'm Sarah. So I'm actually here as a stand-in um, speaker. So actually Laura, our programme director, should have been here today, but couldn't be. But I wanted to credit Laura because what I'm going to talk about is very much um, her... Um, She's been the driving force behind these things. So what I'm going to talk to you about is two modules that we have on the biomedical science program where we've aimed to broaden what we offer and embed um, skills like business, enterprise, entrepreneurship into what we deliver to our students. So for a little bit of context then, um, so we are based in the medical school at the University of Birmingham and we have an intake of around about 200 students per year. Actually, though, over the last decade or so, we've grown considerably. So 10 years ago, we would have had about 70 students, and we're very much a traditional, very research-focused um, course aimed at delivering the next generation of research scientists. But as we've increased our number, what we've seen is that our students um, often do not want to stay within biomedical science. They want a good numerate degree that they're going to take off and do something else with. And so that's been one of the big drivers behind us introducing these new skills into the programme. And that's obviously come alongside um, sector-wide recognition of graduate attributes and the need to increase student employability. Um, we also have a, both a three-year and a four-year programme, and the modules that I'm talking about are offered to students on both of those. So the first module I'm going to tell you about is one that's now very well embedded within the programme. Um, so this is the business and enterprise option that happens in year two. So on our programme, within years one and two, we don't offer choice to our students. Um, in terms of optional modules and the only bit of choice they get is in year two on a module that's called the student selected science project and there most of our students do a literature review we offer about 15 different topic areas and they choose one and go off and work with an expert for a semester to write a literature review but alongside those literature reviews we offer this other option business and enterprise where they can go off and um, explore a new area allied to their um, course in biomedical science so in terms of the number of students that take this up, we don't cap how many choose it. And what we've seen is uh, a quite a steady number of 30 to 40 students per year. So somewhere between 15 and 20% of the intake choose to take this on. So this is a module that we've been running since 2016. And this is something that Laura developed in partnership with our careers network. So Gemma Tandy, who is the enterprise skills manager in careers, um, obviously really keen to bring those skills into our programs and worked with Laura to co-create this. And that was obviously really helpful, but what was also really important is Gemma also um, put us in touch with Reckitt and they helped also co-create the module and they've continued to support us. So, so for the whole time it's been running, we've had support from industry from Reckitt. So what this module aims to do, it aims to get students to be creative as we've just been talking about. So given a practical um, challenge, a practical situation, getting them to explore how to be creative and innovative in order to design solutions. So the way the module works, it runs across the whole semester. They're put into groups of four or five. And what Reckitt do, they provide us with a series of um, areas that the company is interested in developing new products in. So that gives the students that real life um, problem to work on. So the example I've given there is around pain relief and developing new products there. Each of the groups also gets assigned a mentor from Reckitt, so they have them as a sounding board. Now clearly, this is a new area to our students, so we do deliver a small amount of talk content at the start of the module just to introduce them to the key concepts that they're going to need to understand as they go through and develop a solution to the problem they've been set. So they then go off and work in their group for this um, whole semester to develop a solution um, to the problem they've been set. And then at the end of the semester, we have our Dragon's Den events where we have people on a panel who come from Reckitt. We have some academics on there. We invite along the rest of the second year. We also encourage the first years to come along so they can see the kind of thing they might do the next year. And each of those student groups then pitches what they've developed to that quite large audience. Um, they don't get assessed on this bit, but because, I guess, it's in front of a lot of people, they take it really seriously. And although they find it um, mildly terrifying, it's probably safe to say how some of them would describe it, the sense of achievement they get and the amount of confidence they get from doing this is, is really pleasing to see. Um, so that pitch itself is formative, as I said, but then the actual assessment they do, although they've worked as a group, 
The assessment here is individual, so they individually complete a business plan. So again, continuing this theme of having something authentic that matches what they've developed over the um, semester. So feedback, so, um, so feedback here from a student, so you can see they talk about, well, basically what they're saying is all the things we hope they would get, they have got. So a broadening of their perspective, developing their skills, and yeah, they're generally really happy with it. 90% of the students feel more confident after the module and more market ready, more ready to go into the world of work. And in the early years that we were running this, we had a number of external um, validations of, of this being a good thing to be doing. So as I've said, this in second year is an opt-in thing. They don't have to do it. But the fact that it had gone down so well that people were telling us it was really good meant that we started to think about how could we um, or should we be doing this for all our students. So we did consider maybe making everybody in year two do this. But what we actually decided to do was to look at a year three module, which was a synoptic module, that we felt was a little bit tired and in need of updating. And actually, we've revamped that into something that all the students do. And that's the second module that I'm going to um, outline to you. So this is our global challenges module. So this runs um, for our year three and our year three M students, for the students on the M side course. And we've been running this since 2021. Um, so we launched it in the year that we were pretty much um, t entirely online, which was not ideal, but um, it has worked much better since then, since we've been able to do it face to face. So this is compulsory. So all the students do it. So now we're able to see that every student that leaves our program has had this experience and has got these kind of skills. Again, what's been really key in developing this was that Laura worked alongside an expert. So this time our professor of life science innovation, Mike Lewis, who himself is a Birmingham biology graduate, which I think is nice for the students um, to see where they may end up. And he's got many years of experience um, of being very successful within industry. So Mike was able to work with Laura to um, co-create this module, but also because he's got obviously his own connections, he's also been able to put us in touch with other people within industry who can come in and support delivery of the module as well. So I think this idea of finding somebody to work alongside you when you're developing these areas which are quite new is really important. And so what the Global Challenges module aims to do is really to widen student perspective, so get them to think more globally, to understand they're doing this at the end of their degree, you know, how what they've learned so far fits in that whole global um, scenario. And uh, Chris mentioned interdisciplinarity, so getting them to go off and talk to different people to come up with solutions and just seeing how they can take what they've learned and really apply it very broadly. So again, this is another module where there's no exam, it's just assessed by coursework. Um, I'll explain in a minute how it works, but they work as groups again, so part of the assessment is as a group. They produce a three-minute video where they outline the global challenge they've been working on and the solution they've come up with. And then they also have some individual assessments where they then write a press release for their solution and also design a billboard advert um, in order to promote it as well. So how does it work? So it, it runs across the entirety of year three. Um, so they do some work on this towards the end of semester one. Again, because these in, this is a new experience for the students, they do require a bit of an introduction, a bit of teaching. So those industrial mentors that I mentioned that Mike has hooked us up with, they come in and they talk about their own area of industry, how they work to do exactly this, take a challenge and solve it. And they also offer Q&A sessions where the students can come along and ask them questions, you know, maybe get some feedback on what they're thinking of doing. Um, the students are working in groups, so five to six in a group, and their first task is to identify a global challenge they want to work on. So the first year that we ran this, we gave each group a challenge to work on, so we took the UN sustainability goals and picked one of those for each group. Student feedback was they didn't really like that. Some were really happy, but some, some did, wanted to work on something else. So we now let them choose their own challenge. And once they've done that, they then have to work as a group to develop a solution that... Uh, um, that addresses that challenge. As they're going through this, they're largely working in their groups, but they're assigned an academic who they meet with about once a week, and that academic really there is just for support, reassurance, as a sounding board for them as they go through. And then by the end of semester one, what we ask them to do is submit a, so a storyboard. So this is their outline plan of their solution, you know, basically all the freeze frames from their video they're gonna have, 
their academic that's working with them has a look at that and gives them some formative feedback in terms of whether it looks like a sensible plan or not. And then in semester two, so they spend much of semester two, if they're in year three, doing a research project, if they're in year 3M, doing our translational medicine module, and then they come back and work again on global challenges. So in a way, we're looking in the fortunate and fortunate that the structure of assessment within year three at Birmingham means that our third year students sit their exam in January and they don't have any further exams to do in the May June exam period. So what that allows us to do is carve out a month at the end of semester two running into that exam period where they can work solely on this where all the other students are doing exams but our students are working on their global challenges. So again we give them a little bit of teaching this time very practically focused so workshops um, so we work with our business school and with our press office to um, give them a bit of training in how to make a good video, how to edit it, how to write um, press releases and those kind of things. The academic who was with them in semester one continues to support them and has a session with them each week. And then by week three of that month, they submit their, dead, their video and then they have a further week to go off individually and work on doing their press release and their billboard. Now, I don't have time to show you any of their videos, but it's really quite impressive what they come up with. But these are some of their billboard designs. So we asked them to submit it, set in the context in which it would be displayed. So this gives you some idea of the kind of things they, they'd like to work on. So health inequalities, they often pick maternal health, but you can see also some things that are much more to do with um, ecological problems as well. So a real full range of stuff they come up with. And it's um, really impressive, once you get them going, what they can achieve. Um, over that relatively short time period. Again, student feedback is really positive. So this is uh, lifted from our staff student forum feedback. So you can see they talk about enjoying the creativity. They enjoy, um, they think it's a nice way to end their degree. And you can see they talk about broadening perspectives. So again, exactly what we wanted them to get from it is what they report that they did get. And that's it really, but just for context, and we have developed this slightly further, so somebody else talked about having enterprise projects in year three, so we now have a similar thing at Birmingham. And from next academic year, we'll also have a major minor stream which allows them to um, specialise slightly in biomedical entrepreneurship. Okay, thank you.